Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to build a sports celebrity image classifier with this data set from Kaggle. Okay, as you can see, there's four people we're going to predict. And then the class labels, remember, are on the order of the file. 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, Kane Williamson, Kobe Bryant, Maria Sharapova, and Ronaldo. Okay. Um... So, because we don't have a train and a test folder, we're going to create one. Okay, we're going to read file equals, and then with the Kimish Kiros image data generator, we're going to create it with this validation split. The target size is 384 by 384, batch size 12 categorical training, and then the directory reads file 1, and then the val data gen equals read from the directory, and then 384, 384, bat size 8, validation, and categorical. Okay, guys. And remember, if you want to change the target size, you have to change the input shape down there as well, as well as the input shape for prediction. Okay, so um, as you see from my videos, what I normally do is, when it's multi-class, I put how many classes for, for dense whatever. Example, there's four classes, so dense four. With an activation of ReLU to prevent vanishing gradient descent. Okay. And then the input shape is 384 by 384 by 3. And then normally, if this were uh, binary, I would put dense 1. Okay, convolution 128, kernel size 3 by 3, padding equals valid, activation equals relu. And uh, max pooling, 3 by 3, strides of 2. Basically, you continue with this all the way down to here, 2 by 2. Uh, when you get down to convolution 16. Normally, I add more convolutions, 8 sometimes to 4. But I felt the need to only go down to 16. Don't add any more convolutions. And remember, max pooling is for over to prevent overfitting. Prevent overfitting. Flatten dense four because after the input shape must be the same as after this. After you flatten, the activation equals softmax because softmax is good for multi-categorical. Example: sigmoid is better for binary. Optimizer, it doesn't matter whether you use uh, SGD or Atom. Categorical cross-entropy and categorical accuracy because it's categorical, not binary. Okay, so epox 20 and then fit them. And then as you can see, it did well except for the validation loss. Okay, but it got all the predictions correctly. And remember, this is how you can save a model as an H5 file. Name it whatever you want, .h5. Okay, so what we're going to do is prepare the image. 384 from the input shape and the target shape. CV2.IMREAD, Kane Williamson. And then the color, resize the array, return the reshaped, predict, prepare with the def function in Python. And then uh, when we do print, it's to print out the, uh, you know, the uh, sequences of arrays of the prediction. The, and that's just to show it. And then we're going to compute it. Remember? Zero. Ken Williamson is zero. MP argmax function to compute the class label. Okay? Okay. And then um, here's Kobe Bryant. The same thing. Kobe Bryant is one. And Maria Sharapova is number two. And uh, what's uh, Ronaldo is three. Remember, the MP argmax you can use to compute the class label from the sequences of arrays. The reason why you saw four was because there's four classes, so there's four sequences of arrays. Remember, when it's binary, you get one sequence, and you can compute that into percentages of probability in a prediction. So guys, remember that. And remember, horizontal flip equals true always for data augmentation. 
And remember, our validation split was to create a validation folder. Okay, and try not to run it at more than uh, 20 iterations in most neural networks, convolutional, whatever, because it can cause uh, problems with the predictions later. So that's why you try and keep your training under 20 if you can. Um, although, if nothing else works and this works, you get all your metrics up and you get all your predictions right. That's all that matters. Although the rule of thumb is to never go above 20 epochs if you can prevent it. Okay. And um, that is all. And then like I told you, dense four because there's four classes. Example, if there were 24 classes... I would put 24, and then I would put 24 down there as well. So anyways, guys, I hope you learned from my video. Next time, we definitely are deploying on SageMaker. Okay? Thank you, guys. Bye.